Look at that. That's really beautiful. I wouldn't want to get lost in the Sahara Desert. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Whose idea was this? What are you doing, Turkish men? <laughs> We're Marion and Chris, and we've been travelling full time since May 2018. We did it! Whilst attempting to drive around the world in Trudy, our home on wheels, this happened. All British travellers abroad are advised, advised uh, to return now. As borders closed around us, we decided to wait it out in Turkey until we were able to continue our adventure east. Welcome to Turkey! After being inspired by Hussein at the cooking uh, class that we had the other day, and going to the bakery and eating that minimum for breakfast, I've decided this morning to give it a bash myself. I've never made it before, but our friend Aisha, who is friends with a famous Turkish chef called... Aslam! Aslam! She sent us a recipe as well, so we're gonna try and make our own minimum this morning. Maybe with a couple of crisp tweaks in there, I don't know. And uh, get lots of flavour in there, and that'll be lovely to have as a little blunch this morning. So it's really simple, we've got some red peppers, some green peppers, some tomatoes, an onion, normally they actually put spring onion in it or some recipes have no onion in it but I've only got this onion so I thought we'd put a bit of that in. Okay, onions chopped, peppers chopped all there. So we're gonna fry these up in a little olive oil and then add the chopped tomatoes in. So while I'm cooking up brekkie, Marianne is busy. I'm doing the subtitles on the next video, but it's hilarious because by the time you see this, you would have already seen the episode. And it's uh, the video title, Back to School. And it's when uh, we're all playing charades in the villa and <laughs> we all lose it. It's we had hilarious. so much fun. So for those of you that don't know, we translate our videos. We put subtitles in English, German, Spanish, and of course, Turkish. So that's uh, just getting soft, the onions and peppers. So now I'm going to add in the chopped tomatoes. And then we just let it stew down and get all soft. And then we're going to add in a pinch of salt, pepper and some red pepper flakes. The, uh, the red pepper flakes, apparently you can buy mild or spicy. I think I bought the mild ones. If not, I may blow our heads off for breakfast. <laughs> And uh, I've also seen on some of the recipes, they look, put a little bit of paprika in. So I might put a bit of paprika in as well. Okay, so the peppers that I bought, I've sprinkled in. I did taste them before, but I think they're a little spicy. <laughs> How is it, love? <laughs> it looks lovely. It I'm tastes not lovely. I'm but, not happy that you're getting pleasure out of me dying. But I think... It might be a little bit spicy for Marianne. I might have to rethink that one. I might need to go and make sure I get some mild peppers. Can you stop laughing at me and get some water? <laughs> Water's coming up. And then I'm going to crack a couple of eggs in and uh, let them cook, fry up in the, in the juice. And there you go. That is my first attempt at minimum. It looks good, actually. And the, the Ridge Monkey acts as a wonderful pan support to protect the table. That's it, and then you just dip bread in, and uh, voila, breakfast Turkish style is served. We're feeling really inspired because of Hussein, actually. He fired, he put some fire into our belly to be more <laughs> creative in the van. Uh, so we're excited, and he's going to make a cooler version for me, don't you worry. So let's uh, give this a go. Looks nice. First attempt, I think it's pretty good. Mmm. Oh, I've surprised myself. It's a little bit spicy, but I don't mind that. I was going to say, you love heat, don't you? And I might have overcooked my eggs slightly, but good job. Good first attempt. I will perfect that over the coming weeks. And it's very healthy. Lots of veg, eggs, eat with a bit of bread. Good job. So this morning we've just been to see David to talk to him about the mattress because we completely forgot about the mattress. One of the guys from his office, Welcome. he's taking us um, to another shop just around the corner which may be able to help with the mattress. So we'll see if they can do it. If we can do it while we're in Kalken, then we'll do it. So uh, yeah, let's see. Picture. 
So, I offered to go and get the van, bring Trudy here so we can have a look at it, and they were like, no, relax, we'll get the car, we'll go and take you down, we'll have a look at the caravan to see exactly what we need. Perfect service, as always. And we got Turkish tea. Chai. Cheers. They should go and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna go and look at Trudy's mattress. Okay, so we've checked the mattress in Trudy. He thinks it's probably possible. He's just calling his boss just to see whether or not they can do it. Fingers crossed. We've come back to the shop and we're working out a plan. So <laughs> very shortly, we will find out whether we can or we can't. <laughs> but you've got to have a cup of tea. We're in Turkey after all. Okay, so here's an update. They could do it but it would take 35 days to do and we won't be here in 35 days so we're going with plan b which is we're gonna get some plastic make a template of the bed and we're gonna send it to uh, the company that tim from sumarine in istanbul said uh, because they'll make it within i think a week they said on reflection i'm actually thinking that if the angles and the shapes not quite right but you know, the, the main width and length is the same, yeah. then it won't actually really make a difference. Yeah. So we're going to go back and just have a look at the bed shape and then I think we might just draw it and send it to Tim anyway. Well, the reason we were trying to template it and why we had to buy a new measure has been a bit tricky really. <laughs> it's not a normal shaped mattress. It's actually got this P bit here and it's rounded here, it's rounded there, it's rounded there and there and there and in here and in here and none of them are actually the and same it's got a, and it's got a seam down the middle but that's quite easy yeah it's got a fold down the middle and some of them are cut off in straight and some of them are more curved but you've sent it to tim yes i've sent it to tim who is literally awesome and um he's going to sort it all out for us really so <laughs> fingers crossed in a couple of weeks we might have a new mattress we are now heading to Patara Beach. We've heard so much about Patara Beach. It's only about 10 minutes from Kalkan. So uh, we thought we'd go and check out the beach while we're here and the sun is shining. Vamos a la playa. So what we're trying to do is, uh, Patara is famous for its uh, sand dunes as well as its beach and ruins. So we thought we'd start with the sand dunes. So we've come uh, off the main road and we're heading down this little road to see if we can find a spot to visit the sand dunes. Okay, the road's become more of a dirt track, but we are heading towards the beach according to Google Maps. There's a sign saying sand dunes, so we must be heading in the right direction. Oh, I can see them. They're oh, very, wow, what very, a view. Very tall. I've never seen sand dunes that Oh, way. wow. You can see them over the trees. I can see the sea. Oh, look at that. Oh, there's people having picnics. Wow, look at that. Oh. Beach and sand dunes. Oh. That's pretty oh, cool. Look at that view. That's really beautiful. That's better than I expected, isn't it for you? It is. How amazing is this? And what's amazing is we've actually parked bang on level that way. Our head's a bit higher that way, but that's all good. Good morning. We've woken up here on Patara Beach. There's blue skies. The sun is just coming up behind us. So we're gonna go and have a little walk, see if we can climb some of these sand dunes, see if we can get down to the famous Patara Beach and uh, have a little look around. We had the best night's sleep here because it is so quiet. There was nobody here, no dogs, and it was pitch black in fact i would go as far to say it's the darkest spot we've slept in mm. and uh, it's a lovely spot we're surrounded by 
trees and forests on this side and over there we've got views of the beach and the sand dunes. I was just posting a picture on Instagram and I typed in sand to see what emojis came up and there was one that said sun, sand and sea because I suppose that's what holiday is all about isn't it though that combination and uh, here you've got it it's just a perfect spot so it's lovely getting up early it's like half seven and there's nobody here Let's see what's over the top of this sand dune. <laughs> it's very hard walking on this sand. As soon as you step, it just all collapses. <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. That's a great view. We decided to give the drone a quick fly because the wind wasn't too bad. And suddenly it started blowing a hoolie. So we had to land it, but it wasn't, it was like all over the place. So, We've just run down the sand dune to try and find a bit of wind protection, but not a lot. But look how big some of these dunes are. It's a very beautiful morning, but sand, it gets everywhere, doesn't it? And it's really fine sand because it's sand dunes, they move with the wind. And uh, yeah, we just got completely covered in sand. We found some shelter from the wind in these lovely plants. It's like a little oasis on the sand dune, isn't it? It's been so windy. <laughs> I was trying to get the drone back and it was like going forward and it wasn't really moving. You can see the waves out to sea. So it's definitely, the wind is definitely picking up now. But what a glorious day. I guess uh, logically, because there's sand dunes, there has to be a lot of wind. It's not disappointing today. There's lots of different bushes and plants um, as you walk around and I was just looking at some of them and it's like this is like a really spiky holly. It felt like a good idea running down all the sand dunes but now we've got to go back up. <laughs> is that easier like that? No. I wouldn't want to get lost in the Sahara Desert. Lucky for us. Turkey has no deserts. Just big sand dunes. Whose idea was this? <laughs> Not mine. Very windy. And the sand is being blown into our faces and it hurts. Oh, we've got a long way to go to the van, love. We're somewhere over in those trees. So the floor here looks really funny, but we were just saying maybe this is where the footprints were from people that have visited and the winds just sort of moved them all out into little waves, but they looks quite strange, little waves. Little waves. <laughs> we're nearly back. Trudy's just behind there. So we're just picking up a little bit of rubbish because responsible van life, wherever you park, leave it cleaner than when you arrived. That way, they'll always be encouraging the van life community to come and stay because they know that you're gonna clean up. 
rather than make a mess. So it's a good thing to do. Right, back to Trudy. I'm ready for a lie down. <laughs> now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head down the beach because there's some very special ruins with a little story just at the beginning of Patara Beach. Didn't take long for poor Trudy to get a bit dirty again. She's yeah. covered in dust. I think she needs another wash. I think so. To be honest, that's the joy of a beach experience. I, I actually posted <laughs> on Instagram, I'm gonna be pulling bits of sand out of Trudy for months. That's the problem, where the wind was blowing yeah. in the air, literally, it was like raining sand. It's like having a facial. It was, it's it quite <laughs> Sand rough. blasted facial. Oh. <laughs> is that a thing? It is now. <laughs> <laughs> Marianne's just washed the windscreen, which is great. Apart from the fact that when you're tall, <laughs> the windscreen wipers don't come up here. So I'm I thinking, have to duck down to look out the window. I'm thinking there's no advantage to being tall in a van. There isn't. In a house, I used to get you to reach up and get things. No, I've got an advantage. Mm. Yeah. I'm the only one that can reach all of the solar panels with the broom out of the roof hatch. <laughs> There's uh, lots of apartments and hotels and stuff down here, but they're all closed still. Thank you. Okay, we're in. The normal entry is 30 TL each. So we're now entering the Patara ruins, the archeological site. So what we've done, as we said before, when we park up, the batteries are quite low in the van because we've parked up in the shade for the last couple of days. So we've put the solar panel here in the windscreen, which is wired into the van. And that's working a treat. It fits perfectly, made to measure almost, look at that, in the windscreen of Trudy. I love these, uh, these models. So this is a model of what Patara would have looked like. It's so windy today. It's a very windy day. What's the Patara Museum shop? Ah, oh, thank you very much. Yeah. And there's lots What's of stuff. Name? My name is Marianne. Marianne. My name is Nijibie. Merhaba, Nijibie. Chris. Nijibie. And Chris. Nijibie. Yeah. Merhaba. This is the birthplace of Father Christmas, Santa Claus. He was born here. Yes. Yes? Right here. He yes. walked around here. I have to walk here. Oh. Wow. He was born here. So he was born in Patara? Yeah. yeah. Wow. He, he was grown up here. here. Yeah, he was grown up here. This is Auntie Tanka's wedding ring. Oh, right. yeah, it's look at. It's, it's a wedding ring? Yeah, in Auntie Time. Oh. oh the olden days. Is that what's your wedding ring? <laughs> I didn't wear it yet. Oh! Yeah. No! <laughs> what? Why? Why? <laughs> You're amazing! <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you doing, Turkish man? <laughs> <laughs> I went to France with yeah. my horse. Oh. Oh, <laughs> you're waiting for the perfect man. Yeah, yeah, I went him. So in this little shop, they've got loads of little yeah. Patara memorabilia. Yeah. They've got St. Nicholas here. Yeah. And then they've got jewellery. Yeah. I like that. It's a, it's a sun. It's a sun. Do we get the sun or do we get the fish? I put my hand behind. I'm going to have... Both yeah. of them. Yeah, which one? Both. <laughs> Both. Icky <laughs> Sally! Oh, the, the lady in the shop was oh. so lovely. So. And she, uh, she showed us where to walk. Apparently, if we walk up to the top of the hill here, uh, just past the amphitheater, that we'll get a wonderful view.
apart from Patara's wonderful beach, the main reason it is famous is because it is the birthplace of St. Nicholas. Yes, you heard me right. St. Nicholas was born right here in Patara, way back in the third century. There's a reed boat just behind us and it was made as an example of how in ancient times the boats were made and it brought a flashback from when I was a child. I remember watching a boat program called Kentiki. It was about a Norwegian anthropologist who decided to make some boats out of reeds and go on some trips and voyages. Um, if you got a chance to look at it, I really enjoyed it as a child watching it with my father. But it's nice to see that they've got a representation and a model of how it would have been before. You can see by the stone that it's all been redone. And they've got some examples of the old columns as well. And you can still see the original writings that are on it real sense of history here and it's so well looked after on this door you can go in there's like a little mini amphitheater here look at that and they've still got remnants of the marble flooring it's a very small almost private with the uh, vip chair right there in the middle that's chris and marianne's seat right there And then that looks like a very grand entrance there. Look at that archway. This has been preserved wonderfully. So we're just walking along and there's some lovely goats. And some kids. Meh. So this is Harbour Street here in Patara. On one side of this walkway, there are lots and lots of different columns. And if you check them out, they all are made of different stone. So some of them are sort of like rock style. Some are more marbly. And then my favorite one that I've seen so far is this one. Isn't this like a weird, style of rock that's really weird i'm that's a little bit random now i know we have a couple of rock geeks that follow us so tell me what that's all about what is that maybe that was made last year <laughs> maybe <laughs> this street is really well preserved it really gets the imagination going you can imagine life back in the day with the hustle and bustle walking around up and down this street these wonderful big stones in the floor. Uh, there's been a few people over the years that have walked over these. You can hear mating frogs, listen. Let's see if we can see them. So the plan is we're going to try and head to the top of the hill there. We're trying to take a shortcut. I'm not sure it's going to work. The sheep have been here. So if the sheep can go, can we go? We're going, we're going this way, but I have no idea. There's not really a path. So we're just walking along and there's this wonderful chap here. Look at you, aren't you lovely? Wild tortoise. Wow. He's having a little munch. We're heading in the right direction because we're at the bottom of the hill now. <laughs> Are we going this way? I'm following Marianne, that's always a bad idea. Why do you do that? <laughs> I would just take control. <laughs> As if walking up the sand dunes wasn't enough this morning. We decided to walk up this hill. I hope the view's good at the top. 
How you feeling, love? <laughs> Is this the right way, love? It's getting a bit steep. <laughs> uh, we're there yet? Nearly. The view's looking pretty good. We slept down the beach that side. Patara Beach here is one of the uh, most popular beaches in Turkey. I think it's eight kilometers long. So even in the summer, you're guaranteed to find somewhere to sit because it's just so big. It's a big tomb. Whoever was buried here was definitely important. Can you get there? It's a little bit overgrown. Don't think they've had many tourists. It's properly overgrown. Oh, and there's spiky bushes. Stay down there. Is there anything up there? It's a bit hazardous. Okay. Um, it's got a nice view. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's just rocks, but it's just rocks. <laughs> But the view's amazing. Literally over the top of the trees here. We've made it to the top. And you can actually see, I think you can see the beach on the other side. You can go further. See if we get to the edge. Get a view over the beach. There you go, I think that is the best view of the beach that you're gonna get. Patara Beach, look how long that beach is. And it goes all the way off into the distance over there. Amazing. So we're right above the car park where we parked and you can see Trudy there. She stands out a bit, doesn't she? Okay, we've jumped back into Trudy. Boy, it's warm today in here. It is a little bit warm. So we're going to head now down to see if we can get down to the beach. Uh, I think if we follow, looking from the view at the top of the hill, if we turn right here, it should take us to the beach. Spring is coming, the blossoms are coming out on the trees. That's a definite travel bloggers Wi-Fi setup. <laughs> Okay, so we've driven down to the end of the road. They've got this walkway. You can see the water, the sea, right down at the far end. So we've arrived down on the beach. They've got, uh, it's open from eight uh, till eight. It's closed from eight o'clock at night. And uh, you can see that they have turtles at certain times of the year. It's such a lovely sand beach. So many beaches you go to aren't sandy. This is just pure white sand. It looks like it's had a sandstorm because <laughs> the bin's nearly gone. Back to Trudy. Goodbye beach. Fabulous day. Fabulous day. Need to lie down now. You're not in an episode of The Mummy. I feel like it. <laughs>